Welcome. This is David Bowles, Human Meme. Today's topic, the man mob. Several years ago, in a previously published David Bowles blogs article, where I wrote about man math at bowlesblogs.com, I opined on this fact. Men always round down any price. So, $99.99 is not $100. You round down to $90. And all of that is still true today. Oh, and don't forget that, again, in man math, $9.99 is not $10. Nine ninety nine is free. It's zero dollars. Okay. Know that. So these meters of metering the man have been part of my life for quite a while, and this leads us into the silly and secret world today of the man mob. All the unspoken rules and memes where boys will be boys and boys will be stupid, all in the name of protecting the masculine code. And here are some examples of that man mob in the human specific. In a big building in which we used to live, my wife would often ask if we were leaving via the front door or the side door. One door led to the transportation main street. The other door opened into the shopping district. Yes, it was a big building. And inside the building, the front door took you, walked you past the doorman, the front desk. The side door was quicker and a quieter escape. And when you got off the elevator, you had to choose which way to walk. Left, out the side door, or right, out the front. So when my wife asked, are we going out the side or the front? My answer was always this. It depends who's working. And that answer always infuriated her because, depending where we were going, there was really only one choice, one way out. But there was so much more to it than that. The man mob rules. And what? my wife would ask. What? Why? Why does who's working where matter what? And I would tell her, Well, if Carl is working the front desk, Carl expects me to say hello and a fist bump and to ask about his day for just a minute. But if anyone else is working, not Carl, they're not really into that kind of intimacy and emotion. But, but Carl, my wife, said aloud, and then more quietly said, Oh, so Carl decides which way we go out, not us, right? And I said, Right. Well, yes, pretty much. Carl and I are close. Carl helps me a lot during the day. And if I happen to go out the side door without first saying hi to Carl... Well, I'm going to hear about it later. I'll hear about it when we come back in through the front door. Yeah, you could exit our building through the side door, but not enter through the side door. You always had to enter the building through the front door. And I'll be asked about it because Carl will wonder why I just left without saying hi. He'll think something is wrong. My wife was unconvinced. So I continued. It's a guy thing. 
So my wife decided to go out the side door no matter what and to meet me outside after I dealt with Carl being there or not. And, oh yes, Carl was there. And I went to see him and we fist bumped and we chatted a bit and then I left out the front door and turned and walked the long way to meet my wife who was bored stiff waiting for me outside the side door. But mission accomplished. Now that fist bump is an interesting phenomenon in man-mob rules, especially for me, an old white guy who was raised to only know how to shake hands. I don't fist bump very well. And yes, I understand people who work in a big building where there are a thousand people living prefer to fist bump instead of shake hands. Because the handshaking can be a viral threat to health and happiness if you're doing that a thousand times a day. But habits are hard to break, and so I often forget to fist bump, and I offer my hand instead for a shake. And the guys in our building and the neighborhood, they sort of know this about me, and they will just shake my hand. But there are those holdouts who prefer the fist bump. And it is the person who is receiving the offer of the open hand to either reject it or to change and bump it. And you know, it's funny how if you offer a hand to shake and you fist bump instead, that seems to work out a little more naturally than someone who first offers a fist bump and then you try to shake the fist bump instead. An offered fist bump always and only leads to the fist bump, I have learned. And an offered hand, an open hand, and a handshake can either end in a handshake or a forced fist bump. Open hand, closed hand, handshake, fist bump, that is always the man-mob dilemma. And now I quietly wonder here with you, my human meme friend, do women fist bump as much as men tend to? I've never seen a lot of female fist bumping, and uh, I always tend to offer to shake a woman's hand than to fist bump it. But then again, what do I know? I don't remember anything. And I feel the same way about men, too. Handshake first, fist bump never. But, as I just said, what do I know? And speaking of handshaking, it's funny how when my wife and I leave our building and we run into workers in the building who are hanging out outside the building, All the guys tend to shake my hand and at least say hello, but they will only sometimes say hello to my wife, and they will never offer to shake her hand or to fist bump her. Now that's sort of interesting, right? And I'm not sure why any of that is. Maybe it's some kind of no-touching policy or male-female war gender separation or some sort of uncomfortableness, who knows. I do know, though, that my wife doesn't have to worry about fist bumping or handshaking because it's not a thing for her. And she has no interest whatsoever in the rules of man-mobbing. And finally, we come to the case of the overnight front desk worker. There was a super great guy who worked overnight in our building. Sometimes I would walk my wife to work super early in the morning. And I would say hi to the overnight guy. And this is like around 5 a.m. in the morning. And then after walking Jana to the train, I'd come back to the building And I'd chat with him, the overnight guy, for a while. Well, my wife's schedule changed, and she didn't have to leave quite as early. And so I'd walk her to the train later, like 7, 7 7.30, All when the overnight guy was off his shift. 
And after a few weeks, one of the other guys, workers in the building, asked me if I was okay. Because the overnight guy had been asking about me, wondering where I was. And he wanted to know why he didn't see me any longer. Ah, and then I knew. I felt terrible. I had violated the most basic man-mob rule of them all. Touching in. My overnight friend and I had established a ritual. Every morning we chatted, we shook hands. No fist bumping because he was an old white guy like me. And then I disappeared without an explanation. And that was rude of me, and I know better. So the next morning I went down, 5 a.m., just to see my overnight guy, and I apologized for not being in touch. I explained the change in my wife's work schedule, and I was very appreciative of him worrying about me and wondering about me. And he was cool with that, he understood. He just needed to know. And that's a really good lesson. People always need a reason, so give them one. Your reason is always the best if it is the truth. But sometimes people just need you to lie to them a little bit. But there was no lying in the case of the overnight guy. But in general, people want to believe you, and they don't like random behavior. So define the who and the what you are for them without them having to ask you first. And then everything will be better off for everyone. Because everyone then feels like they know what's happening and why what's going on. And all of that is good for the community. So, my human meme friend, these man-mob rules are really just common human sense interactions for both man and woman, beast and pet, love and hater, and everything else in between with its own label and deconstruction. And as long as you are able to wake up every day and make it through that day every day, life is right and good and valuable. And in the man-mob worldview, that's always something to fist bump. Thank you for listening. Be a human meme.